hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make your own throw pillow from scratch yes that's right guys from scratch so we're going to be making the whole thing the insert as well as the pillow cover so you'll be needing your zipper you'd also need your main fabric and for this i'll be using my patchwork fabric that i made in my last video if you haven't seen it i'll put a link in the archives above as well as in the description bar below so you can check it out you'd also be needing some muslin or any lightweight fabric and that's what you use for your insert so i'm using this cotton fabric that i have it's actually really lightweight so i love it you will need your tailor's chalk you need some pins you'd also need your measuring tape so i've got mine right here you need your ruler so i've got this long ruler here and it's basically just to connect all the points that you make so you can get straight lines you need your fabric scissors and of course you need some fiber so you need about 300 to 500 grams of fiber and i've got a whole bag full of fiber the fiber is for stuffing your pillow To cut out the insert fabric, go ahead and fold your fabric into two. As you can see, I have mine the folded edge touching the wall and I have the separated edges towards me. The first thing to do is to determine the size that you want your throw pillow to be. It's important to note that the throw pillow cover is usually smaller than the throw pillow insert. So like I said, you want to determine the size that you want and then you want to cut out your insert fabric to that size or to the dimensions. In this case, I want my throw pillow to be about 16 inches by 16 inches when I'm finished. So that means that my throw pillow cover will be 16 inches by 16 inches while my throw pillow insert will be 18 inches by 18 inches because like I've mentioned earlier, it needs to be slightly larger. So check out the description bar for recommendations for what to use for your throw pillow cover as well as for your insert sizes. Next. Mark out the desired width or the desired dimension. If you remember when I was folding this fabric, I folded so that my folded edge was towards the wall while the separated edge was towards me. So go ahead and mark out the desired dimensions that you require. And in this case, the desired width that I require is 18 inches. However, I do need to add allowance, sewing allowance of half an inch to the left and to the right hand side, giving me a total of one inch for the sewing allowance. So 18 inches plus one inch makes 19 inches. And as you can see, I went ahead to mark 19 inches all through for the width. After marking out the width of 19 inches with allowance, I went ahead to mark out the length and as you can see, I'm marking out 18 and a half inches and the reason I'm doing that is because at the bottom, we do not need any allowance because it's on fold. If it wasn't on fold, I'll be marking out 19 inches as well, but because it's on fold, I'm marking out 18 and a half inches. After marking out all the points, go ahead and connect with a ruler. The next thing to do is to find the midpoint of the top bit i've made it so that the top bit is the part that is facing me so i've gone ahead to mark the midpoint from the midpoint you want to go ahead and mark two and a half inches to the left and two and a half inches to the right which is basically a total of five inches from one point to the other point after marking out the five inch gap you need to make a tab to make a tab, you basically just want to draw another rectangle on top of the 5 inch mark and then connect the sides. This tab is useful so that you can top stitch the um, insert close after stuffing it with some fiber. You find out that when you have the tab, it's a lot easier to work with than if you didn't have the tab. Go ahead and cut out the fabric as shown. Starting from the edge of the tab, go ahead and pin the fabric all around and then go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch as shown. After marking out the sewing allowance, go ahead and sew it together as described. Be sure to sew the other side as well. After sewing, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see the stitch, but as you can see, I left the five inch gap that has the tab. I had left it on sewn. So go ahead and clip off the corners and then go ahead and turn the fabric inside out. You can push out the corners with something pointed. Thank you. 
Go ahead and start stuffing the insert fabric with some fiber stuffing. You want to make sure that it's not lumpy and then you want to make sure to push your stuffings into the corners so that everywhere is properly and proportionally filled. You also want to make sure that you do not overstuff the insert fabric. So basically you want to make sure you get it right. You want to fill it and just make sure that, you know, it feels nice. If there's a little bit of space, put some more stuffing in. However, you want to make sure that it's not hard and it's not over full. After stuffing the insert fabric full, go ahead and top stitch the insert fabric close. This is where that tab we left comes in handy. So basically, you want to just hold it together like I'm doing right now. And if you need to use pins, go ahead and use pins and hold it together. And then go ahead and top stitch the gap closed. After top stitching the gap close, this is what the insert looks like. And as you can see, it's really fluffy and I'm just playing with it at this point. So next, we're moving on to the main fabric. Go ahead and fold the main fabric into two and then mark out the desired measurements plus half inch sewing allowance on all sides and then cut it out. The major difference between the cotton style for the main fabric and the cotton style for the insert fabric is the fact that when I was cutting the insert fabric, if you remember correctly, I had it on fold at one side. So because it was on fold at one side, which was the length, I only needed to add half an inch sewing allowance to the measurement. The measurement that we required was 18 inches, but instead of adding half an inch to the bottom and the top, I only needed to add half an inch to the top, making it 18.5 inches. However, in this case, which is the main fabric, I will not be cutting it on fold. So basically, I need to get out a pillow cover that is 16 inches by 16 inches. However, while cutting, I need to add my sewing allowance of half an inch to all sides, meaning that I will be cutting out 17 inches by 17 inches. And when I'm done, I would have two separate pieces that measure 17 inches by 17 inches again if you don't understand why i have 17 inches is because for instance for the height if i was going for 16 inches i need to add half an inch to the bottom for the sewing allowance and half an inch to the top for the sewing allowance which gives me an extra one inch which makes it 17 inches i hope that's clear so after cutting you can see that i have 17 inches for the height and 17 inches for the width so both pieces i have measure 17 inches by 17 inches Next, mark out the zipper allowance of half an inch on both fabrics and then go ahead and install the zipper. If you don't know how to fix the zip, do check out the video that I've linked in the iCards above as well as in the description bar below. To install the zipper, locate the left side of the pillow cover as well as the left side of the zipper when the zipper is held right side up. Then go ahead and place the left side of the zipper on the left side of the pillow cover you want to make sure that it aligns with the sewing allowance or the zipper allowance that you marked earlier go ahead and pin the zipper onto the left side of the um, pillow cover making sure that the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the pillow cover you also want to make sure to leave about three quarter of an inch at the top and then you want to go ahead and sew it in place after sewing the zipper this is what it looks like. Go ahead and top stitch the zipper as shown.
after top stitching the zipper on this side this is what it looks like so the next thing is to go ahead and fix the zipper on the other side on the other side which is the right side go ahead and mark out the zipper allowance of half an inch all the way down Then go ahead and place the other side of the zipper on the sewing allowance making sure that the top and the bottom matches. So as you can see I prefer to start from the bottom so I just go ahead and place it on at the bottom making sure that it aligns with the other fabric and I go ahead and pin it in place on the zipper allowance making sure that the right sides of both zipper and fabric are facing each other. You want to go ahead and pin it all the way to the end and then you want to go ahead and sew it while sewing you might need to undo the zipper just a little bit so that you can finish it up but that's absolutely normal after sewing the other side of the zipper go ahead and top stitch it in place as well This next step is very important. Undo the zipper halfway. This is so that you have enough room to turn the pillow cover inside out after sewing. After undoing the zipper, pin the sides together and then mark up the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew together. After sewing that side, this is what it looks like. However, we still have the other side as well as the bottom unsewn. So I'm going to go ahead and sew starting from the bottom as well as the other side. You want to make sure to sew carefully when you get to the other side, especially where you have the zipper because it is a bit, a little bit thick. So you want to make sure to sew it carefully and you want to make sure to hold it in place properly. After sewing the second side and the bottom, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, I went ahead to trim off the excess zipper as well as any loose thread. I have to emphasize the importance of locking your stitches. So be sure that you've locked your stitches so that you don't have them unraveling or loosening. Trim off any loose thread and then go ahead and turn the pillow cover to the right side. If you need to push out the corners with a pointed object, go ahead and push out the corners with a pointed object just like I'm doing. Afterwards, you want to give the pillow cover a thorough iron. Now that the pillow cover is ironed, you can now insert the insert into the pillow cover. You must remember that the pillow insert is actually slightly larger than the pillow cover, but it will make the pillow really fluffy and it will fit really nicely. So guys, after inserting the pillow, this is what it looks like. I went ahead to zip it up and the pillow, throw pillow rather, is now ready. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys, for being on this journey with me. You guys are absolutely awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list by using the link in the description box as well as my patrons page. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video on Sunday. Bye.